Well, that's 98.6. This cat is a person. Okay. Clean it. You ever get sick of cleaning stuff? Yeah. Yeah. But gotta do it. All right. Cold, isn't it? Yes, it is cold. <laughs> now, he uses a lot of rocks in his nest, and uh -huh. what I usually do is just throw them back in the water, and he'll he'll redo it. Oh. That could probably go in the bucket. Yeah. You can't smell it. You don't want to smell it. This is special penguin bouillabaisse. Mm-hmm. Mud, grass, regurgitation, smelly rocks, lots of poo. You think, you think you've smelled every kind of poo there is, and yet you stumble across a, a brand new nuance here. Uh -huh. I mean, I, is it the urine? I guess, it must be, the ammonia. Ammonia, is yeah. Fantastic. I'm starting to get it now, yeah. Yeah, That's I mean, nice. I mean, really. Yeah. <laughs>
All of them have four chambered stomachs, and it simply comes down to regurgitation. An alpaca has the ability to propel its digestive juices, or spit if you prefer, whenever it's scared or startled. So the whole shearing for the one animal could be worth roughly? Could be worth seven or eight hundred dollars. So a good animal living a full life is worth thousands? Yeah, just in the fleas. But not an actual stomach. I, have, I think some number, some number one in my nose. <laughs> Look up with those teeth. Are they just bottom teeth? Yep. Yeah. Holy smokes. They got no upper teeth. That's why I say they really don't have any defense or any way of hurting you, so mm -mm. they can't bite you. I'm afraid I'm going to cut her neck open. Nope. I'm trying to even that up a little. This is not as easy as you made it look. This is why you hire her. This is why I don't do it. What am I doing here? <laughs> Damn, that's Definitely. hot. If they start to get warm like that, you kind of listen to the sound of your motor too. If they start that little tiny slight screeching, that means they definitely need some lubrication, so we give them a little dunk. Whenever you hear slight screeching, <laughs> it could be a lubrication problem. I, I made a mess of it, didn't I? You did. Actually, you did a horrible job. It's better than I've done. We got an alpaca that's still alive. Nobody got hurt. Good. The fur came off. Just I'm clean her up. Make her, make her beautiful. <laughs> OK, let her feet go. Let her feet go. Oh, my god. <laughs> There's nothing to her. She's humiliated. Poor thing. You turn your back for one minute, and you got a flying cow. That's a Holstein cow. Holstein. How much does this cow weigh? 900, 800 pounds. Hey, how you doing? Everything cool? 533 looks OK. Yeah. Why are these blue? This cow is ready to fresh pretty soon, to have a baby. OK. So that's a treatment to treat the udder to not going to have infection. Because you almost never see blue udders. Right. And see how the hoofs start to get twisted. The cheese is a little bit overgrown. So the goal then is to, to clean the inside, to trim the inside, and to leave her to walk on the outside walls. We start with the draw knife. Draw? Yeah. So we clean the outside walls, make sure nothing's stuck between yeah. the claw. So they're literally, I mean, cut all the way in half like that. Yeah. Cloven from start to finish. And we start to work from the inside. She doesn't feel it, and less you know, you go too deep, which we got to very be careful. If they're never trimmed, these things just would just grow like toenails? The cow not going to be comfortable. She's not going to be able to eat, and she's not going to produce, and most likely you're going to lose the cow. You're talking they could grow out to here? Yeah, definitely. So we're going to round the toes first. Ami and his crew work from sun up to sun down trimming hooves. It takes two trimmers for each cow. That's good. You didn't drink milk this morning, huh? <laughs> oh, no worries. Happens at home sometimes, but never quite to that degree. All the weight should be here. Yeah, on the outside and walls and on the heels, yeah. No, it doesn't smell too bad. I've done this with horses before. There's really stink. A hoof knife is used to remove any poo, stones, or bruises from these heifer's hooves. Well, this is nice. It's a little French manicure there. Yeah. Do we have uh, a little polish on them? What we're seeing here is Israeli ingenuity yeah. at its finest. This is, this is great. Yeah. Still got the belly? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm losing it when she's on ground. Now she's totally on her own feet again with her fancy new hooves. Yep. It's a nice little parting. Hey, how are you? OK, we're going to pick up some eggs here at the gate, Mike. I'll have you get the uh, the eggs, and uh, and I'll uh, hold the gate. This is the egg box. It's got uh, foam holes for the eggs, and and make it a two-hand drop. So they because if the eggs hit each other, they'll crack. The male gets down and, and early on in the season, and he digs this nest out. This is the nest we're looking at. Yeah, right here? you can see where the indentation in here, where he's he's dug it out with his uh, sharp toenails, and then the females uh, lay in the nest. Oh shoot. Oh, no, look, he just walked on an egg. Yeah, we just we just opened one. What the heck happened there? Yeah, well, she accidentally kicked it. Huh. And now it's, uh, and, and now they really like their own eggs, so. Now it's an omelet we got yeah, going. Yeah, we, we need to get in there and get those eggs right, out of there. Let's get the eggs. Let's let's go get the rest of them before, they, before they break those. Them. Yeah, that's. Look, back up, you morons. Yeah. You smashed your own egg. OK, move it out. <laughs> 
They must have very tiny brains, no? Uh, about the size of a walnut. Here so we go. Their brains are smaller than their eyes. We, ouch. Get, out. Get, get in there. They just crush their own young, and here I am stealing their eggs. Dangerous? Hell yeah. Okay, Mike, get after those eggs and get in there and get them. Well, how does one... Get I mean, in, just dive in there. Push them aside. Honestly? Yeah, honestly. I better get in there. Re Jesus. Okay, come on, get in there and get those eggs. Throw the box down. All right, throwing the box down. Don't kick get me. Get your eggs. Don't kick me, come on. Come on, get your don't, eggs. Don't kick me. They just smashed their own young good with job. their tiny... Good job, you did good, you did good. All right, we're gonna get some more eggs here. Okay. This gal is sitting on them. Sometimes they get three or four sitters at the same time. Today we she's just got sitting more. on there, or is she? Uh, yeah, she's, she's all right, isn't she? Oh, she's fine. She's fine. Now go over there and ask her nice to get up off those eggs and. Hey, cupcake. I need your eggs. She's hissing at me. That's right. Talk nice. Hey, sweetie. Me and Doug were thinking we could maybe, uh, you know, run off with your ovums. See if we can go over there and nudge her and, uh, and see if she'll get up for you. Hey, you're on the eggs we need. Come on, get off those eggs. You don't want those eggs. There you That's go. It. There you go. That's it. Don't don't crush your eggs. One of these. One of these. All right. Well, that wasn't so bad at all. He says right before he gets attacked. There we go. We'll put it on the scale. Six point four. 6.6, .6, you were pretty close. Uh-huh. Most cats have a temperature between 101 and 102.5. Most cats also have rectums. I just make sure it's got it properly in there. I think we do. Maybe we need a new thermometer. Maybe we need a new cat. 98.2, three. Anesthesia can lower their body temperature just a little bit. Well, that's 98.6. This cat is a person. OK. Clean it. You ever get sick of cleaning stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But got to do it. All cats are given eye cream to protect their eyes from drying out during surgery, except for cats without eyes. No cream for them. Now we tag it. <laughs> OK, you want to give your injections? Every cat gets a rabies vaccine. What did we forget to do? Is it a boy or a girl? We don't know how to prep it. I felt like he hissed like a, like a boy, but let's have a look. This is clearly a boy with nipples and no penis. <laughs> Don't let the nipples be your deciding factor. As a rule, that's a good that's way to go rule. through life. The female cat's gestation period is just two months, and she can get pregnant again just eight weeks after giving birth. This is why spaying and neutering is so important. With litters of up to eight kittens, the math is staggering, which brings us back to Spitty Kitty. Watch the nipples. We have to be mindful of the nipples, but yeah. it's not like she's ever going to use them. You don't want her waking up with less than she came in with. Um, unless you're counting ovaries in a uterus. Well, yeah, that's true. A feral cat born in the wild has an average lifespan of five years. A domestic cat might live anywhere from 10 to 20 years. According to Google, there was a cat in Texas called Cream Puff who lived to be 38. We've got a boy over here. So this is the first male we've seen. This is basically what the castration process looks like. Is it technically, is it a tomcat? Uh-huh, it's a tomcat. That's one side. Mm -hmm. And that's a male cat. That's that fast? Yeah. It's that fast. On male cats. Permission to touch the testicles? Yeah, that's, she's all yours now. Well, technically, that's a he, I believe. He, yeah. Well, maybe not as much as he was a few minutes ago. What is I think we know what they are, Nick. Do I have to spell it out for you? Yeah. Balls in the bin. Sounds like a carnival game. All right, I have one with a um, little case of dirty bottom, dirty bottom. here. When it um, when they eat wet grass, like when it rained the other day, they can it, it can make them have runny bottom. So we've fed them, so now it's time to potty them. You're gonna hold one hand here, uh -huh. and this is the cloacea under here. This is where everything important happens from a kangaroo. Right. This is where they mate. That's where they go to the bathroom. That's where the babies come out of. And you just have to stimulate it. We use a wet wipe because very they're used busy, to their very busy junction. Yeah. Here, you want to show them with Dilly? Wait, so the goal is to All make right. them pee? Yeah. That way they won't go in their pouch. You train them to, right. to go to the bathroom right after they eat, uh, and then they learn to get out of their pouch to go to the bathroom. This thing's going to be spoiled forever once you go through a childhood like this. <laughs> you don't even know, I didn't even know I had to pee. And then a nice lady came along and rubbed me till I did. 
I'm never leaving this place. <laughs> you didn't see this on planet Earth. <laughs> hey, well, she's biting me. She's grooming you. No, oh, is she? She's accepted okay. you as a kangaroo. Well, she's going to accept me probably as a fiance in a minute <laughs> if I do all this right. <laughs> well, okay, no. <laughs> All right, now pull your hand back so we can see if she's seeing or not. Not yet. Okay, go ahead and do it. What do we call this? Yeah, well, you were like, you were like all up in there. That's why you got that. Well, oh, come on. You gotta be in it to win it, there, Sarah. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, and now look you in there with the whole forearm thing flexing and everything. I was trying to gentle it up a little bit. All right, so you can, uh, let's turn around. I think she's got some poo there. Yeah. Um, the little arms are really delicate, so you never want to pick them up from there. Right under here, and then the base of the tail, and then you flip them and tuck them like a football. Oh, yeah, look at that. Flip them and tuck them like a football. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to flip you and tuck you like a football. Right, like I did this to a goose once. Look yeah. at you, crapped all over yourself. <laughs> now, Tully is our special little girl. Her mom, for some reason, stopped taking care of her, mm -hmm. and so we pulled her, and she had stress fractures in her leg. Oh. So she's got her little camo. <laughs> so we start standing the same way we did? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. There we go. She won't Sorry. Sometimes I swear they pee more than they've drank. Still peeing amazing. I feel like I want to pick her up and ring her out. Oh, I don't think we've ever captured a kangaroo <laughs> fart on the show before. As you can feel right now, if you want to pull on it, it's pretty heavy. That's a full nappy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there is a little screw cap right here. Yeah? You need to unscrew. We have to weigh this, so we don't want to lose anything if we can help it. Yeah. Okay. Man, <laughs> tea is terrible smelling stuff. Yeah. Oh, dear. And you're also oh. going to have to massage the bladder to kind of squeeze it out of there. Ah, daggone it, Jillian, no matter how much you shake it. These last couple of drops. <laughs> ah. Oh. There we go. Dear me. So you can go ahead and screw the cap back on the bladder. Cap back on the bladder. And then we're going to remove the nappy from the horse. Oh, gosh, I wish you could smell my hand. I do. I wish you could just, I just wish I could reach into your living room with my hand and just rub it right under your nose. I wish I could. Pants are too long for this job, too. We sometimes will roll our pant legs up to do this. Super, super great tip. Just about an hour too late. Just, yep. And you're going to have to slide it out between his legs. All right. Okay. Pull it out of there. Ah, that one okay. disappointing Okay, now we're going to take right it out here. Uh-huh. I'm going to turn Marvin loose for a little bit. Turn him loose? Yep. In the stall? Yeah. Loose. You're free, Marvin. Enjoy those 15 square feet. So you ready to empty the poo? Yes, I am. I'm ready to do that. Easiest way to do this is to grab on to these straps here. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tilt it over top of the bucket and try to shake it out of that tail hole area. I think it already came out of the tail hole. So keep this kind of over top of the bucket. Oh, I see, that tail and you hole. You want to tip it up, and you're yes. going to kind of shake it in there. I got it. I got it. Yes, Marvin, it's yours. Then watch it come out again. And then we wipe them out. We clean these once a day. Mm -hmm. So you basically just have to wipe everything up, make sure you get everything out of there, and then wipe all where it's messy. <laughs> where it's messy. This is the bladder area. We don't want poop to get into his urine. So you're going to have to stick your finger in there. Oh, come on. <laughs> don't, don't make stuff up. No, I'm serious. If it's clogging, the urine will overflow and go onto the floor. Look, I'm a good sport. I'll do whatever you tell me. But I mean, gloves? I, I see them all over the place. Well, we usually wear gloves when, when we mix the when we mix up the poo. But this, we're usually in, you know, in the middle of doing okay. something. No, that's fine. I just, I'm just asking, because yeah, I'm, no. I'm curious. OK, let's go ahead and have a poke around there. Nope, nothing blocking up the urn hole. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the thorough check. I believe you. There was, <laughs> I don't believe that was necessary, actually. <laughs> now you want me to just wipe all this stuff? Yep, swipe it all up. Well, what are the odds of getting some more towels? Could you spare a square what, one at a time, really? Well, you probably won't need any more than that. I mean, I don't want to get personal, but one square at a time? Is that basically how you roll? I gave you three. <laughs> well, I had to ask for all of them. We're trying to be, like, environmentally conscious here, too. Yeah, yeah, there's been a real run on paper towels. <laughs> Cleaning the nappy thoroughly ensures that the next load of poo won't be contaminated. And once we got Marvin's nappy back into place, he was good to go.